Support Wrestle Talk. Thanks for your Patreon support. Liam Solid as a rock. Hello and welcome to the Wrestle Talk su- su- Super News. I'm Ollie Davis. Press the thumbs up button, give us a subscribe, and leave a comment down below where today's big wrestling question is: Would you rather fight one Brock Lesnar-sized duck? or a hundred duck-sized Brock Lesnar's? Let me know in the comments down below because I'll be replying to people from out of nowhere. We've got a packed show for you today, including the latest on Dean Ambrose quitting WWE, WWE trying to stop more wrestlers from leaving the company, and why Brock Lesnar could be joining them to move over to All Elite Wrestling. But first, let me introduce you to your new Fantasy Booking Warfare Champion! I beat Laurie. In the latest Fantasy Booking Warfare round, my NXT Invasion of Raw storyline beat Laurie's with 59% of the vote. In your face, Laurie's ideas! Become a pledge hammer on WrestleTalk's Patreon today to pitch what topic we should fantasy book next month, or I'll be defending against Luke Owen. Perhaps it could be booking literally every single wrestler WWE has quitting the promotion. Apart from Dolph Ziggler, of course. He's never going to leave. Over the last few weeks, an unprecedented amount of WWE stars have reportedly requested their releases from the promotion. Scott Dawson and Dash Wilder of The Revival, Mike and Maria Kanellis, 205 Live wrestler Hideo Itami, and most shockingly, top star and former Shield member Dean Ambrose. In what I'm sure is totally unconnected, all these release requests have come since AEW officially announced themselves on the 7th of January. How could these stories be related? What am I missing here? Ambrose is by far WWE's most significant loss of the six, with him reportedly being scheduled for a big storyline in Sunday's Royal Rumble match, which was scrapped when he notified officials he wouldn't be re-signing in April, and turning down a seven-figure five-year deal, largely thought to be because he hates the hokey S-word his character has been booked to do. While Dave Meltzer is reporting Dean wasn't amongst the six to eight names Chris Jericho claimed AEW want to Coach from WWE, he does note that Ambrose is friends with both Y2J and co-executive Vice President Cody, and him eventually ending up in AEW is the most likely destination. Someone he'll be leaving behind though is his real-life wife Renee Young, who's made her first post about the situation on Instagram. This guy, the world is yours my love. Heart emoji! No guts, no glory. With a picture of Dean visiting the birthplace of his deceased friend, Mitch the Plant. I'll never forget you, Mitch. But WWE's loss is the non-WWE world's gain, with the best deathmatch wrestlers on the planet excited for John Moxley's return, which is the name Dean wrestled under before signing with WWE. Impact Sammy Callahan teased, interesting, isn't this dude from Ohio? Hashtag Switchblade Conspiracy, which is also Sammy's home state. And papercut extraordinaire Jimmy Havoc simply demanded, give me Moxley. Joey Ryan, meanwhile, famous for his Jim Cornette enraging penis plex moves, angled for a different kind of match. If Dean Ambrose hates hokey S-word, he's gonna love the first indie to book him versus me. And in true indie wrestler style, immediately followed that up with a new piece of merch. You need to put a bit more thought into t-shirt design than that, Joey. Us wrestling fans don't just buy anything with a relevant slogan on. Did I mention my Ooh Wendy t-shirt that you can buy from WrestleTalkShop.com? Maybe none of those dream death matches will happen because wrestling is wrestling and everything's a work. Pro Wrestling Torch were the first site to break Ambrose leaving WWE just hours after Monday's episode of Raw, where Dean had lost clean to Seth Rollins and was then thrown out the ring by Nia Jax. It's a classic WWE move. Bury someone on their way out to ruin their chances outside the company, and having his last storyline feud with Nia would be a great way to humiliate Ambrose before he leaves. But then WWE took the very odd step of announcing Dean wouldn't be renewing his contract on their website, which has got many speculating this is all in fact a good old-fashioned wrestling storyline. And according to the Wrestling Observer, that belief isn't limited to fans, as some wrestlers backstage in WWE reckon that's the case too. I know some of WWE's talent think it's a work because they put it on the website. Some talent knew Ambrose was leaving on Monday, but most didn't. But last night when I was trying to confirm it with people, they didn't know. The backstage writers have also 
also apparently been left in the dark. Most of the creative team had no idea. And they had no idea that this stuff was being scripted to, you know, whatever, humiliate him or bury him on the way out or whatever it is. They didn't know any of that, so they're even wondering. In my opinion, that's entering conspiracy theory territory. I mean, making a storyline about loads of people quitting your company because they think it's rubbish isn't the best thing to publicise. <laughs> It'd be like basing a whole new era on how bad your ratings got. It's all still your fault, Baron Corbin! In uncertain times like these, though, you can always count on John Cena's weird Instagram page to make things even more confusing, where he simply posted a random guy called John Moxley's yearbook profile shot. Hey, maybe John knows something we don't. I should ask him. Returning segment segue! This week I tweeted 16-time world champion John Cena using my investigative journalism skills to uncover what he knows about the Dean Ambrose situation. Hey John, John Cena, I see you. LOL, I can see you. You know Dean, what's up with Dean? Can you tell us about Dean? Is Dean going with Cody? Love you in the trans movie with the yellow car. Waving hand emoji, dollar sign emoji. Bumblebee for the win, yo. My much love, please retweet OD Kiss. And I've included a picture of the Bumblebee movie he was in to show I'm a true fan. Still waiting on that reply. One, one of these days, I've had Ryback. I'll check, maybe he's done it on Instagram because he does like stuff on there. It's just a load of more weird stuff. Hey, hey, maybe, maybe he has replied, but I just can't see it. Because that's his, it's his thing, the, 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 the taunt. It's, it's a great, it's a good movie, Bumblebee. Whatever's going on with Dean, work or not, so much talent suddenly trying to leave the company has reportedly put backstage officials in crisis mode. Mike Johnson has revealed on PW Insider Elite that Ambrose leaving led to WWE scrambling to lock down talent on Tuesday night. There was a buzz of activity backstage at SmackDown as anybody who had a contract that was coming up in the next year or two was pulled into rooms and spoken to by management about signing longer form deals. All the wrestlers were sitting around looking at each other and going, would you look at this? This is crazy. There definitely was the realization that people could potentially leave to go to AEW. Perhaps this is where Hideo Itami asked officials for his release, who both Fightful and PW Insider have reported will be leaving the company. While the Revival and the Canela Sai were denied their releases though, it's speculated that Ambrose can leave because his contract will soon expire and Itami was only granted his release because he'll be moving back to Japan. Scott Dawson of the Revival seemed to reference this in his reply to Itami's thank you farewell tweet. Go to sleep now. I will always respect you. See you soon. P.S. You're, you're very stiff. WWE might have been scrambling on the wrong brand's roster though, as it seems AEW's top target could be on Monday night. Well, ev every now and again on Monday night. He he doesn't show up much. Following Brock Lesnar's win over Finn Balor at Sunday's Royal Rumble pay-per-view, AEW star Chris Jericho posted this since-deleted tweet. Intimidation and fear goes a long way in our business, guys. But let's be honest, Brock Lesnar needs to pull up his pants and lose the gut. The dream is over, dude. I don't play by the script. He followed this up with a message for All Elite Wrestling's rival promotions. Hey, WWE, Ring of Honor and Impact. I love what Watching you guys push all your randoms, but just know that we are interested in maybe six to eight of your talents total. We don't need you! As Jericho deleted these posts soon after making them, some have speculated it might have been a classic case of drunk tweeting. Dave Meltzer, however, knows otherwise. Referencing how Jericho first started building to his shock Wrestle Kingdom 12 match against Kenny Omega in New Japan. Were his tweets about Omega in 2017 also drunken tweets? Learn from history. His building for 
the future opponents just like 2017. Whether it happens, that's up to dueling checkbooks, but that's Cherico's goal here. I know things on this subject weeks ago. He is 100% working you here if you think these are drunk tweets. Jericho and Lesnar, of course, have some backstage scuffle history, with Y2J reportedly squaring up to the beast backstage during the confusing fallout to Brock giving Randy Orton a concussion in the main event of SummerSlam 2016. Meltzer expanded on the possibility of Lesnar leaving WWE for AEW on Wrestling Observer Radio, where he noted Paul Heyman will have many companies to play off each other when Brock's current contract expires after WrestleMania 35 and the next Saudi show in April May, speculating he'll use competition between WWE, UFC, and now AEW to drive up Lesnar's price significantly. With AEW having the billionaire Khan family backers, who are almost three times richer than the McMahons, it's not out the realms of possibility. And as Meltzer continued, put it this way, Chris Jericho wants a match with Brock Lesnar, and Chris Jericho has a lot of sway. That doesn't mean a deal is going to be done that's a stupid deal, but who knows? And in what sounds like a tactical leak to potential Raw and SmackDown signees, Jericho's AEW contract figure is now apparently known in the WWE locker room. And a lot of people were stunned, freaked, depending on your viewpoint. While Meltzer doesn't reveal exactly how much, he does compare it to the promotion's existing pay structure, where Jericho's deal would be near the top in WWE. Wrestlers are all of a sudden like, whoa, something out there is real. And I'll tell you what else is real. The brand new issue of the Wrestle Talk magazine, which is out now. Me wearing a different t-shirt segue. At 48 Full Color Page magazine, which features wrestling news, reviews, fascinating insights and statistics, has recently turned one year old. And our list of readers has rapidly grown to include some of the biggest wrestlers and industry insiders in the world. Cheers, Matt Riddle. Isn't it time you became one of them? In issue 8, you can expect to find all the usual news and reviews of weekly shows and supercards, as well as our QR code system, taking you to loads of audio versions of articles, videos, and exclusive content. As it's the new year, we welcome the return of one of our most popular features, the mammoth task that is the WrestleTalk 100, where we rank the top 100 male wrestlers from across the globe, assessing the greatest pro wrestlers on the planet in order and why. The issue's features include a look at the women's evolution, and we explain why WWE's first ever all-women show has made a difference to the landscape of professional wrestling. Greg Lambert looks at the highs and lows of the career of Roman Reigns, whose tragic leukemia announcement in November last year rocked the world of wrestling, and what Reigns' contribution to the industry really is. Power Slam's Finlay Martin delves into wrestling rivalries, revisiting Hulk Hogan vs Randy Savage, and explains just why this was one of the greatest showdowns ever in wrestling history. And there is so much more! We are truly proud of the WrestleTalk magazine, and we assure you, you will not be disappointed when you get your hands on it. Order issue 8 right now, or go on better and subscribe, and make a big saving in the process by clicking the eye above my head or the link in the video description below. Or click the WrestleTalk magazine link on screen now to discover your new favourite wrestlers in the WrestleTalk 100 list. I've been Ollie Davis, and that was wrestling.